Yeah, I do because I'm such an addict that I'll just sit there and just fucking look. Obsessed. And I'm such a dumb person that now when I open it up, I'm like, oh, there's nothing there. And I just put it down because I'm what you call a not intelligent human man. <laughs> so, guys, our not intelligent human man today is the one, the only, a Simon Rex. <laughs> Spit takes are always funny. I didn't even need to do that. I just. It's, you always got to like drink while someone said it worked. That was real. I mean, it wasn't real, but it was. <laughs> that looked really real. I was like, yeah. wow, I must be really good. Um, things are always funny. They're so good. I'm so glad to have you here. I'm glad to be here. I've known you forever. I know. You know, it's funny. I just came across in my Vine archives. Oh, They're like God. saved in my phone as a folder in my photographs. It's like, it's like a Vine folder. Because <sighs> remember when they took Vine down, you had to save them to your phone because yeah. they deleted the format. Yeah. So I just randomly came across. When I met you, we did a Vine at the com at Laugh. It, what's their place called? We did Funny, it at Funny, the or, Funny die. or Die. And you rolled. I rolled up on you, or you rolled up on me. Like, hey, Vine, we both do yeah, Vine, yeah. and we shot one. And I'm like, yeah, you're not funny, or something. Yeah, that you're we did like, yeah, except you're not funny. And I was yeah. like, oh, thanks. And yeah. then you left, and it was great. And that's how we met. Yeah, and that's and when I, I started watching, my antidepressant. <laughs> um, yeah, that was in what? How long ago was that? 2014. Oh my God! So that was six years ago. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that was a fun time because I felt like Vine in the beginning was every everybody who had a creative, weird, ADD mind like we do was yeah. just having fun, and it was the old, it was the best toy ever made. And there was like a good one or two year window where we all collaborated and met up and would you know had well, fun. let's meet up and do one, and we did reoccurring characters. And then like everything else, it becomes corporate and political, and, and people ruined. get egos, and it kind of lost the magic. He totally lost. So the magic. Yeah. now Instagram doesn't quite have the magic, and I, I don't do TikTok yet. I'm supposed to. Everyone keeps telling me I got to do it. I have I fun on there. Okay, I should try. I do some TikToks. I did one with Hannah Stocking, and it was like, no, nope. yeah. So then I should open one then because she was like a big. She's a big one. Yeah. And, but I'm just fighting with it. I don't. know. I should do it. Why don't you want to do it? I don't need another reason to look at my fucking phone. That's why I unfollowed everybody on Instagram. I hate. I, you hate it. But I love it. But I love oh, it. Oh, I didn't mean to break it. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. TikTok's Fuck so you. fun, though. Is it? Why? You know why? Because it's not as like competitive as Vine. Really? Like, it's like everyone's kind of doing the same thing and uh -huh. their own take of I'm it. I'm breaking my teeth. Sorry. It's fine. And so no one's like, you could do the same thing as someone else, but your take on it, and no one's going to be like, you know, giving you shit or whatever. It's actually like it's really mean. fun. It's not no, a mean it doesn't it's a, your seem mean. I mean, obviously, I get shit because I'm me for right. everything in life, but yeah. not as much as I used to on Vine. Uh, yeah. I, I farted on the phone on you yesterday. Was that a real that fart? Was real, it was real I'm going to play it. Under the I was mic. like, can you play it? Yeah, I'm going to fucking play it. Dude, I farted I, so okay, good on you. Okay, I don't think this is a real fart. Uh, if I have to do a real one, can I do it on the show? For sure. <laughs> yes. Do it right into the microphone. What okay, a guys, great show. This is the fart that Simon says is real. Do the first one. It's real. <laughs> No fucking way. That's nothing. I got way no not. fucking. I got way, way better ones. That, that was you need weak. to you need to you need a job as a fart artist. <laughs> I should do TikTok farts only. You should just oh you God. fucking ripping just ass ripping into ass. the fucking camera. Someone just sent me a TikTok of a guy farting really long. Can I show it to you? Yeah. It's, and and I, he just sent it as a TikTok, and I was like, oh, maybe I should do this with TikTok. I can just fart on it as like a fuck you to everyone. Just do constant so, so farts. I'm gonna show you this guy. He looks like Action Bronson, but he it's does. not. Look like Action Bronson. And listen to this fart. You think, you think I'm good? This guy's amazing. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, I could do them that long. That sounded juicy. Yeah, that was a juicy. Fruit. Is everything okay with your digestive system? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think I just have, I'm I'm Jewish. You have so. a little IBS, a little nervous Irrit stomach, irritable bowel syndrome. Yeah, little um, Je Jewish nervous yeah, stomach. I, you know, I don't know. I just always been able to have really long, funny farts that don't smell bad. I'm very gifted. Why it's don't like you I, record them and put I, them on iTunes for people to buy? I did. That's a good idea. I actually recorded one that was uh, 17 seconds beginning to end. Not, I swear. Stop. I swear Swear to God, and I'm not even that religious, or I don't, we don't need to go down that road. But <laughs> I farted for 17 seconds. So you're a fartist. Uh, yeah. You're a fart oh, yeah, artist. I'm a freelance fartist. Fartist. And anyway, so that we don't That's need to. That's incredible. Yeah, How's I life? I mean, you're like, 
you're in Venice still? Yeah, or what? Santa Monica, same, same kind of thing. vibe. Yeah. Uh, similar to unfollowing everybody on Instagram, I also hit the Hollywood wall, the right. proverbial wall of like fuck everyone. And because I've been here longer than you, you've I, done you everything. Here, you moved here from the Philadelphia area in when like I was 2000, in 2005. Oh, oh, 2005. Oh, yeah. you were here longer than I thought. Um, so I've been here since 1998. I moved here from New York in 98. With those were fi- the good times. Those were the good old times. Uh, and it was it was. Uh, so I've been doing the Hollywood thing. It's funny, driving here, driving by the Warner Brothers lot, I remember commuting every day to my TV show back when like they had sitcoms on the air, yeah. you know, now there's don't really exist. No. And I remember I was driving by having these memories from like 2001 when I would just drive stoned f- from my house in Laurel Canyon down to the Warner Brothers lot to shoot. Like I did a TV show called What I Like About You with Amanda Bynes and yeah. Jenny Garth. It was like a kind of a teen WB show, but I was making... I could talk about it now. I don't, is it tacky to say what I made back no, then? No, not it at was, all. They, this is how much money they were spending back then. I would get like almost $50,000 an episode to shoot an episode every week and in front of a live studio audience, and I was just raking in the money, and this is back when Hollywood was just throwing money out. They would give me like... I remember I got a holding deal for Warner Brothers. They would be like, oh, here's 150 grand. Don't work on any other networks. We want to hold you. That doesn't even exist anymore. So I was making so much money, and I was just like, had no idea what I was doing. Just moved here from New York. It's almost like uh, I peaked early. Like I came wow. here and just started doing scary movie and TV Immediately. shows. Immediately. Immediately. I just started working, and I had no idea what was going on. I was barely even in acting class. And then after that, it's just been a spiral of social media uh, doing Decline. shit with you know losers <laughs> like you. So here we are. See, and that's what I love about him. He's honest. Yeah, um, I peaked early. So and we so were going to call this like, podcast the D-list, but yeah, instead yeah. it's just worse for us. No, it, but, but then what's funny is that I actually had more fun working with people like you guys on Vine was so real and raw and fun yeah. and, t- and the people were so talented and there was no agent. There was no studio. There was, it was just us doing what we wanted to yeah. do. Yeah. And that's when the best shit happened. Good times. Good times. So, I know. Um, when, you, when you're dependent on the Hollywood machine, uh, there's so many things that are out of your control. That's and why everybody's w- got their hands yeah. in it. They're like, ooh, I want a little piece of that pie. Ooh, give me a piece of that. Da, da, yeah. da, da, da. And they're not really doing much besides answering a phone. Totally. It's like you yeah. don't even, the agents are becoming obsolete almost. Oh, and my God. It's so, so funny. We're doing all this shit on our own. Everything. And, and the best shit, I swear to God, the best response I get from people is like, oh, my God, Vine or Dirt Nasty or the shit that I just do without any other people is like... Their just favorite. my gut instinct, like the shit with the skits we would do. People love that shit. Or your characters, nobody was, you know, writing for you. You know, no. it was like your brain. Anyway, yeah. So, um, yeah. I, my point this is a long-winded way of saying I've been in LA for twenty-one fucking years, almost twenty-two years. Wow. So I had to. I'm not ready to just completely abandon living in LA, but I had to get out to the beach and get away from Hollywood. Yeah. And just go out to the ocean and just right. like be that guy. So now I'm, I'm the cliche who's at the beach going to yoga. So do you, what is your thing now? Like you're still um, acting? Yeah, I just did a movie. I just did a movie right before uh, the end of the year last year, but an independent film. And But like that's what I was saying, like movies now, unless it's a big studio movie, movies yeah, don't, don't pay shit. shit. Like I did a movie for a month and I got like nothing, yeah. nothing. Yeah. Not even half my rent. Right. So uh, it's just an interesting time because uh, it's either really big studio shit or nothing. There's right. nothing in between. It used to be a lot of in between shit. So, or then you could shoot something for nothing and then it ends up blowing up and you still right. don't get anything. <laughs> well, I'm doing a podcast like you. It's called, yeah, Nervous, it's called Rex. Nervous Rex. Check out Simon's podcast, yeah. Nervous Rex. On all platforms, everywhere, just like anywhere you'd get a podcast. And I got some really cool guests. I've had you on. Yeah. Uh, well, you name know. the cool ones. Don't name me because then they won't check I had it out. Charlie Sheen. That was cool. Charlie. You had Charlie name. Sheen well, on yeah. Nervous Rex? Well, I hit him up and I was like, Charlie, um, I'm going to ask you something and, and I know you're going to be annoyed. He's like, what, dude? That's how he talks. And, uh, <laughs> And he's like, uh, I'm like, will you do my podcast? He's like, yeah, I get that all the time. And I say no to everyone. But for you, I'll do it. And then he came on the podcast. I need to watch that. It's I fucked up. I, I've i talked over him too much. I got to learn to stop doing that. Oh, uh, I did that too a lot in the beginning. Yeah, I got to slow down and, and listen. Then I, yeah, then I read my comments and people were like, would you shut the fuck up? And I'm like, oh, you guys are nice. Okay. Well, I noticed you're a comment reader, which could be unhealthy for psychological reasons. Oh, 100%. But it's also good to learn about what you're doing because that's your feedback. So you're learning about what you're doing wrong. I, like, look at you right now, listening all nice. I, like you, I'm just ADD weirdo brain. We're yeah. both fucking chihuahuas. Exactly, as people. Right. Um, <laughs> and I, by watching and listening to myself on the podcast, it's so hard to like, it's like, oh, dude, shut up and stop. Let him finish the sentence and this and that. And I was so excited to have Charlie on. He got one word in. So, Ugh, that's but anyway, the worst. Go watch it. It's great. <laughs> 
Go watch Simon talk to himself on the Charlie Sheen <laughs> totally, podcast. Totally. Okay, don't. so you know the whole premise of my podcast is worst first. Some of the worst shit that's ever happened to you. People mm. come on here, they tell everything from bad dates, mm. bad drug trips, Ooh. bad jobs. Oh, wow. You know, you've had some of those. Yeah, oh, all God. of them. Yeah, all the above. <laughs> Let me think. Um, oh, God, there's so many good ones I have. I didn't come prepared, but that's okay. better that way. Yeah. Uh, we like do we need to, fly. we're going right into that now? We, we can, can be we anything. Can, we can, can work be our way into it. Yeah. I mean, uh, you've gone on a lot of dates. Yeah, I've gone on. I would on love to hear a bad date that you've gone on if you can think of one in particular. Oh, man. My, you know what's so crazy? I always tell people I can't remember my amazing life. Like, I've had the craziest shit happen, and I don't remember. Because drugs? I, huh? Yeah, <laughs> well, I think so. I think it, I smoked so much weed, and, and I, now I don't smoke weed. But I have permanent brain damage from smoking pot for 20 years. Really? But it worked for me. Like, I was just, you know, longer than that. But, like I was saying, when I first moved here, I was just so oblivious, just stoned, and and it worked. All the time? I was high all day, every day, yeah. I'd go to work stoned. I'd be on, like, on set high. How did you well, memorize your lines high? Um, You know, memorizing lines isn't that hard, actually. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I don't, well. <laughs> it's, no, it's easy once you start kind of using that part of your brain. You can memorize it if you're doing it a lot. It's yeah. more... Uh, Acting good is hard. Oh, you being a good actor. Shit. I always found doing comedy to come natural, but if I have to play some dramatic role, I'm like, I can't take myself that seriously. Yeah. Uh, you just fart into the camera. They're like, totally, could you not do that? Yeah, this is totally. a World War II film. So, <laughs> oh so this God. is a Holocaust movie. What You're all oh, I think Sorry, I, I was just trying to lighten the mood in this fucking oven we're in right now. I think I have one. <gasps> if you fart into this mic, I will be so happy right now. It's coming. As long as it's not stinky. We'll talk about worse first. Is it stinky? No, I don't. Well, actually, you know what? Maybe I. <laughs> Oh no, it just smells like fucking okay. <laughs> old gorditas in here for the rest of the podcast. Uh, <laughs> just kill myself. While I'm thinking of the worst first, I just have good stories to tell you. I had a really funny thing happen today. Tell me. I went to yoga today, which is supposed to be relaxing. Right. And, you know, it's sort of a place you go for an hour to like, as you can tell, I'm a fucking neurotic Jew. Yeah. So I need to go to <laughs> yoga every day to sit in a room where nobody talks and you just breathe and stretch and leave your phone outside because I'm a fucking dickhead, right? Yeah. So I go to this class over by my place and it's hot yoga. It's like a steam room where you just basically, it's not like some spiritual fucking experience. It's just a physical kind of a, a vibe. Yeah, it's not. I've been to those yoga classes where it gets real heady and they're, white people are wearing turbans and all that <laughs> shit. It's a little much. This is more just like hot yoga. Anyway. It's, good, it's a good exercise. So I get in there, and uh, this dude walks into the classroom, which is just f etiquette is like be quiet and respect other people's space. And he comes in, and he's singing loudly, and everyone in the class is just like, dude, chill out. And he comes in, he throws his shit on the ground right next to me, and uh, he's making these noises, and the, you could tell the whole energy in the room. Everyone's annoyed with this guy, and I'm like, great, he's sitting right next to me. And the whole class, he's doing a... Like when, if everybody's doing one pose or position, he's purposely doing the opposite side and something different and making noises like, and I was like, is this dude like what? a psychopath? He was just really weird, right? You're all, am I on a game show? What's going on? No, I thought it was a hidden camera. I'm like, is this like a hidden camera show, the worst guy ever to walk into yoga? And then, <laughs> so the whole time I'm thinking in class for an hour, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna say something to him after class. I can't not say anything. How am I going to approach him in a yoga studio and tell him that he's being insensitive and, and he needs to be more respectful of other people's space and stop like being a fucking dick? Yeah. So the whole class, I'm sitting there and instead of enjoying class, I'm thinking, how am I going to tell this guy? I don't want to come off like aggressive in a yoga studio in front of people like, hey, man, what do you? Yeah. So the whole time I'm like, what am I going to say? So I'm like, OK, I got it. You're going to go up to him when no one's around in the men's locker room, not in front of the lobby area. And you're going to say to him very nicely, I'm thinking this in class, as he's driving everyone nuts. I mean, he's doing shit like, you know, imagine everyone's, imagine, <laughs> imagine everyone, am I still in okay? Imagine everyone's doing this, right? Everyone's doing a pose like this. Yeah. This guy's standing the other way and he's going. What's up with the noises? He's a fucking dick, right? And there's always that one person that ruins everything. So in class, I'm like, why am I letting this bother me? This is really annoying. Ah, uh, you're okay. Fuck this dude. No, he's, <laughs> whatever. I'm going through all the shit. So anyway. I, I walk out of I see him leave the room after class is over and I follow him to the men's locker room and I approach him very calm and he's filling up his water thing in with the a knife. <laughs> yeah. With a fucking gun to the back of his head. Hey, dude. Uh, but and, calmly. Yeah. Uh, and he's getting his water and I go, excuse me. Um, uh, can I please tell you? Uh, 
please please tell you something just this mellow can i please tell you something um could you maybe next time just be a little more respectful of people's space in the class you were really disruptive with how you came i go you're really disruptive he's like huh what do you mean and i go you walked in the room and were really loud and like the way you threw your stuff down and i said at this comma i was like it's just like just you know maybe don't bring that in so we could all just you know it's everyone's space to go relax and he goes you know what and i go what he goes you know he, I, he goes you know what and i go what he goes you know who the king of kings is I go, who? He goes, Jesus Christ. And I go, oh, he's mentally ill. He's <sighs> he's like a street person. Oh. And he was and then I realized like, like oh, he's meant he has like a I don't know what. He's on the spectrum. So right, then I felt right. kinda bad, but at the same yeah. time I'm like, Well, don't come in here with your shit, dude. Like I'm sorry. I don't know what your deal is. I'm Take thinking your fucking this. Seroquel and <laughs> Right, so then a couple other people see this happening at the water thing, and this guy comes in behind me, and he goes, uh, and he walks by me, and then I go, I go, oh, this guy's like mentally something's wrong, and then I'm like, fuck it. So I walk into the men's locker room, which is by the water cooler, and this guy goes, I'm gonna knock that dude's fucking teeth out. I'm like, see, I'm not crazy. He's a dick, right? He goes, that dude comes in every time, and he ruins the class. I'm tired of him. Then the guy overhears this happening. Oh, Mind you, this is in a yoga studio. Oh my god! So all of a sudden, now right after class, when you're supposed to be like, mm, zen uh. out. It's like adrenaline tension fights about kill it. that motherfucker. It was so gnarly. <laughs> I'm a downward dog. My fist in his yeah. asshole. Yeah. yeah, I was ready to kill this dude, and I'm like, fuck. And but I was glad I said something because I didn't want to leave there being like I should have said something, you know. But I said right. it very calm. Good for you. And, and then uh, and then he started making more nonsense and came into the class. And then uh, I, I guess I really brought like it to the surface because when I came outside the rest of the staff of the, the people that work there they're like yeah like I think they gotta ban this guy from coming because he's fucking class up for everyone and I'm like what I, I said when does this guy come to class because I'll just not come anytime he comes I right. just gotta avoid this guy he's the worst right and uh and yeah, and th there's no really good ending to the story. So except wait, so wait, did he fuck homeless? that guy. No, he wasn't. He, not homeless, but definitely like something's wrong, you know. Yeah. And then I felt kind of bad because he probably he knows you know he doesn't know what he doesn't know. And, yeah. But still, it's just like it, the only one who judges us is Jesus Christ. Yeah, you You're know, like, he's one of those right, people on the corner yelling. You know? Yeah, yeah. And he came in, and I already noticed his outfit was weird. And when he came in, it was like all loud. He had like a tube top on, and he had like a weird. And he would just do. He just looked something was off, you know. <laughs> he had Timberlands and like a he, tube top no, for real. He and a ballerina fuck, skirt. <laughs> but fuck that dude. Why did I talk about that? Way to come on the podcast yeah. and put down mentally We're, ill people. Dude, fuck. I don't know what he is, though. I don't know what to <laughs> no, do. Maybe I know what you just... mean, but that is a worst first yoga experience. Yeah. It was my first time sure. back in a long time, but uh, I hadn't been in a long time, and I just rejoined the class. I'm like, all right, that, fuck. How much is this class per class? It's like, I think it's like 20 bucks, 25 bucks a class, but you do the monthly unlimited for right, like right. 150 bucks, and you could just go every day. As, and yeah. I'm a Jew, so that's what I do. Yeah. I'm yeah. always trying to get a deal. Yeah. Um, um, okay, let me think of some other worst firsts. Uh, well, it's okay. Take your time. Uh, oh, the first time I had sex. Was that horrible? It was horrible. Isn't everyone's, though? Mine was scary, uh, yeah. Uh, All right. Uh, <laughs> tell, or, or, I'm sure you've told... <laughs> I'm sure you've told that well, story. Well, I've told... Before. I'll tell you later, because oh. I've told it on here already. It's a fucking nightmare. Oh, really? The first Everybody, time I had sex. I can't imagine anyone's first time is ever like, it was so perfect. It's so awkward. I was and, 18, too. Mm, like, I was like an slut. adult. No, yeah. that's an adult. I know, I'm joking. People, girls are having sex at like three now. I know. <laughs> like, mm, I, oh, I know. I'm pregnant and I'm I mean, seven. I know. <laughs> Ew. Wait, what? Uh, uh, so how old were you? I was 16. 15. I knew it. I knew you were young. her name was Cynthia Danley. She had big tits. Shout out to Cynthia Danley yeah, and her we, big milky titties. Cut to her husband fucking watching this. Uh, <gasps> He's like, I'm going to kill that motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and it was funny because me, so me and my buddy, uh, me and my buddy both dated her in high school. Like, I think he dated her first, and then I dated her, and then she moved away, you know? So in high school, that was a big deal. Like, she left town. So she comes back to visit for, like, Christmas vacation or something one year. Ooh. And everyone's like, ooh, Cynthia's back. Who's going to hook up with her, Simon or my friend Kevin? We both dated her. Yeah. So my friend Kevin has a party at his house. She comes to the party, so he's thinking, oh, she came to my party. I'm going to get in there. And I ended up having sex with her in his bed, in his party. And Using I remember- his dick. Yeah, you just, uh, I sucked his dick. And then I remember uh, so clearly, I remember I, I needed a, uh, I don't need one, but I got a condom. Good. So it was his place. So he had the condom. So I never forget me asking him for one as the girl he dated is in his bed and I'm about to have sex with her. So he opens the door and he throws the rubber at her and it like hits her. 
the condom. Like he's like, fuck you, you're fucking my boy. And then we proceeded to have very horrible, awkward, squeaky, like sex. I, and he was, still let you fuck her oh, in yeah, his in bed? in his bed, yeah. He's like, fuck you, man, but I'm gonna shut the door and make sure no yeah. one comes in. No, I remember he threw the condom at her and it, like hit her and she was like all embarrassed and it was like at his house. And it was just really bad sex because you don't know what you're doing. And um, and then I thought in my mind, I'm like, oh, I'm I'm gonna get laid all the time now. And then I didn't get laid for like a year and a half afterwards. Did it feel good at least? No, because it was a condom, and it was like fucking a a, a penguin, a dead penguin. <laughs> you know. I love how you called it squeaky sex because that's what it feels like with rubbers. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like a water, it's like a, a circus clown with the balloons. Yes. You know. Yes. But when they when clowns they pump them up. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she had big milky titties. She had big old tits. And so what happened? You guys never talked again, or what? No, I lost t in contact with her. Uh, this was in nineteen nine. This was in nineteen eighty nine or ninety. Are you dating anybody now? Yeah, I'm dating a human being. You are? Yeah, an yeah. actual human. Yeah, she's she's not a robot. Wow. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, she's uh she's very she's the smartest girl I ever dated. So that's intimidating. Uh huh. She's uh she studies uh depth psychology. So she, I can't get anything past her. Like she studies like. You know, Carl Jung and Sigmund Freud, and she like anytime anything happens, she's like, "Oh, you're doing that because your father left when you were." Th I'm like, "Fuck," you know what I mean? Like you she knows weeping. the root. <laughs> yeah, like everything. Well, not everything, but she's just really smart, and I'm used to like kind of dumb LA girls like yeah. you. And thanks. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so I'm dating somebody. Uh, it's, but we, it's uh, it's about four or five months in, and we just went to Asia together for six weeks, which was really That's a ris long time. Really risky of me to bring a girl I just started dating on a trip that long. Six I was really weeks. well it was supposed to be a month, and that's long enough. We pushed it two weeks longer because we're all the way in Asia. So I'm, uh, we've been dating like at this point. We just got back from Asia, so at this point we're dating like three months. And I was going to Asia for work. I had a show with Mickey Avalon in oh, Bali. Oh, dope! Yeah, so we had a show in Bali, and since you're halfway around the world, you might as well stay in Bali for a while, right? Right. And goes, and I went to Vietnam and Cambodia and Thailand, all these other places. So we're dating. I'm like, you want to come with? So she's like, yeah, and she basically quit her job to go on this six-week trip. She worked at a homeless shelter in Santa Cruz. So she wasn't paying, getting paid anyway. No, but <laughs> and she was working with the really, you know, fucking tragic, you know, uh, mentally ill, uh, drug addict, homeless. It, it was it, like I drive her to work, and it was like just dropping her off at work. I was like, fuck, and she goes in and like works with these people, and. Uh, so she um, quit her job to go on this trip. So I had all this pressure, like, fuck, man, she quit her job to come with me. Is this yeah. too soon? Uh, and then we ended up having the best trip ever in Asia. That's we went the awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You, so you love traveling? I love traveling. You don't get scared ever, like, what if I get sick and I'm in this foreign country? I like it. You do? I like being out of my comfort zone. I don't like, I get bored if I'm in the same place too long, if I'm just like, uh, like I'm kind of a homebody, but I just love to be in some weird country where I'm lost and I have no idea where I am and I don't speak the language and trying new food and fucking just being like, where the fuck am I? I like that. What's the weirdest shit you ate? Because um, I know they I, eat like snakes and shit in Vietnam. Yeah. They eat like weird. Um, and I heard Vietnam oh, was yeah. beautiful. I had human hostage penis. It was pretty good. <laughs> No, uh, that was, what was the weirdest Fried thing? Fried or what? No, uh, yeah. uh, kebab. No, <laughs> I, I can't. Nothing that you didn't weird. Didn't eat anything weird. I mean, nothing that weird. Just like, tr like, different things that you've never knew existed. Like I was in Vietnam eating breakfast pho, which is basically like, you know, like pho, 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 whatever you yeah. want to pronounce it. Like these little bowls of like hot soup. That's like because they don't have bacon and eggs in Vietnam. Right. It's like they have little bowls of soup for breakfast and just try. Weird, just things that you would never even knew existed. More just like, all right, I'll try this. And then half the time it sucks, and half the time it's really good. Wow. Uh, so I was just doing weird shit, and, and uh, scu I just started scuba diving. You did? Yeah. Did you scuba dive over I there? I scuba dived a lot. Did and you see any sharks? No sharks, but I got attacked by a trigger fish. What which the is, hell I know is I didn't, that? It's a fucking aggressive fish that has like a piranha with these big teeth. And so I was. It bit you? It bit my fins and was chewing up my fins, and I was scared for my life. This fish, I'm not lying, was was that fucking big with teeth like human teeth and i'm in the water and i'm very uncomfortable in the ocean i'm from san francisco you don't go in the ocean you don't even have swimming pools in san francisco <laughs> so i'm not a water guy you know so like this is talk about going out of my comfort zone like going scuba diving couldn't be more out of my comfort zone you're in the fucking ocean yeah like submerged you know 35 feet below right if something goes wrong you're, the service so hard it's scary you don't have any wi-fi down there no wi-fi no so hospitals the signal is horrible and what if it bit your penis? I was thinking about the trigger that. trigger dick. Yeah. Like, and, 
so just fucking bite your nuts off. Um, it was very scary, and it happened on like. So we had a few days of scuba diving. It went really smoothly. Talk about worst first. My first scuba trip, I got attacked by a fish. Jesus. So I'm going to show you what this fish looks like. And, Ew. Uh, Guys, look up trigger fish. Yeah, it I'm sounds like you. he gets triggered very easily. Yeah, he's put, yeah, he's... Is that why they call it that? Because he gets triggered? <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to just what, show you. What, what, what part of Asia were you in when this happened? This was in... Uh, in Bali on a little island called Nusa Panita. And they were like, it's safe. Come in the water. No, they told us, they said, if you if you see one, uh, you know, j- you, your instinct is going to be to swim up and away, but go sideways to get away from them because they protect their eggs in a certain like area. So, but of course I didn't do that. I just freaked out and tried to get out of the surface. So it just kept, it attacked me like nine times. It would just circle, come sideways and start biting my fins and shaking my leg. And it was- uh, Could it shake your leg? That's it was key. strong enough? Fuck yeah, I was shaking my leg. It looks little. No, it was big. Uh, no, it was. I, I'm not lying. Look, look. That, that big? big? That big, and the teeth are human teeth. Ew, they do. They have like veneers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who did this guy's veneers? Yeah, gold fronts. Guys, um, look up triggerfish. They got some crazy... Oh, they are big. It was sketchy. Well, look, for look. me, it's like, okay, look. Do yeah. people eat them? Uh, actually, they're not that delicious, but my boy sent me a video of in, in China. They do eat them, but they'll eat anything in China. Yeah. Uh, is that <laughs> they'll racist? They'll eat you in China. Yeah. Is that racist? <laughs> uh, so it's anyway. It's not racist worth if it's scuba, true. <laughs> yeah, scuba diving got attacked. So the trigger <laughs> fish, did it rip your fucking fin? Yeah, the fins had like holes in them, and these are like, you know, big rubber fins. There was full holes through it. If that was your skin, and then I looked up later when I went back to the hotel, I Google like trigger fish injuries. They're like full on fingers missing, gouged open heads. Like they'll fuck you up. And, you know, it's like you're he in the He could have went for your skin. I know, but I was in a wetsuit, luckily. So but he, still, they'll go through the wetsuit. He'll suit. bite through your wetsuit. So he's biting my fins and just fucking shaking them, and I'm just like, fuck. I'm just like, it was gnarly. Where's your girlfriend at? She's watching, laughing. Oh, she's videoing with it. The, yeah, well, she I wish got, she videoed it. She got a million it. views Fuck. on YouTube I for it already. <laughs> God, we, I wish we filmed it. Uh, she was laughing? Yes, I'm because dead. it was just so ridiculous. Yeah. Like, she's like, I've been scuba diving for years, and like I've always been afraid of them, and the first time you go, you get attacked, and she's watching it, and there's nothing she could do. She's just got to watch it happen. So worst first, scuba, scuba diving. Scuba diving. Yeah. Do you like scuba diving? I fucking love it. I was couldn't wait to get back in. I'm like in my in my mind, I was like, well, now that that happened, I guess it's not likely it would happen again for a while. You know, <laughs> next like, time I hear from you, Simon Rex yeah. killed in a trigger yeah. fish. <laughs> totally, <laughs> they bit his fucking nose off. <laughs> well, um, that would take a lot of trigger fish. Uh, I I uh, I I wasn't afraid to go back in. That's how much I knew I really liked it because I was pumped to go right back in. I know? heard it's really peaceful and quiet. Yeah, it's interesting. It's a combination of total zen, yet kind of an adrenaline rush. Right. So Because you're under there and you're like, fuck, like you're in an aquarium and you're weightless and all you hear is your own breath. You don't hear anything. Just like, it's like an outer space. I would have like a panic attack. It's gnarly. Like it's yeah. way out of my comfort zone. And if zone. you take this out, you're like. Yeah, well, you don't take it out. But yeah. you can take it out and just hold your breath and put it back in. You, you get comfortable with the equipment and then you're good. But uh, it takes a minute to get comfortable with all the apparatuses and the breathing and the goggles. And if you get like water in your goggles, there's tricks to like get the water out underwater. You got to like blow and tilt up, and then because your goggles could fill yeah. up under. And then you, know, you can't deep. see anything. You can't and see. And you got you contacts. Got... Yeah. <laughs> <You're> all... <laughs> yeah. Well, that was great swimming in the darkness. <laughs> yeah. No, it's uh, it's definitely out of the comfort zone. But like I was saying, I like that shit. That's yeah. when. Uh, that's, I think, when the best shit happens is when you're out of your comfort zone, so I'm all about it. Wow, that's good for you, living yeah. on the edge. Living on the edge. Living on the edge. Okay, guys, we're going to take a quick break with oh. Simon Rex, and we will be right back here on Worst First. Oh. Beep, 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 beep. We are back. Hopefully those ads weren't too, uh, you know horrible for you guys thanks for listening and thanks for everyone here who's a supporter of the worst first podcast we're continuing on with our guest simon rex who on the break told me that he has a story that he's never told anyone before on public radio right right i've told a couple friends but i haven't publicly said this on any type of uh, podcast or anything theo vaughn said come on my podcast and tell this story but he's yet to have you know what theo vaughn i asked him to do my podcast and he was like i'm too busy you know what theo could suck 85 dicks (laughs) My, He's uh, like, I'm too famous. I was on the real world. So uh, fuck off. Yeah, no, he told me because he loved the story. I've told a few friends, but I just never told. So now I'm going to tell the world. I did acid with my dad. Oh my god! Yeah, recently. Is your dad like into drugs? Um, well, he did acid, so obviously he's a. a my dad's a hippie. Okay, oh, my dad's, dad's a hippie. hippie. Where'd you grow up again? San Francisco. Oh, okay, so you're total. My parents are hippies. Look. 
Yeah, you came with Jesus shoes on. I'm a hippie. Like Your hair, I'm, hair. I'm actually, as I've gotten older, I'm kind of reverted back to my San Francisco roots. I thought I, for a while, I thought I was like a tough black guy for a while. <laughs> I know, and now you did I, go and through now, that. Yeah, and now I, I realize, oh, you're just a hippie and embrace it. So um, I'm wearing Birkenstocks. Your parents are Jewish hippies. Yeah, we're called Jippies. <laughs> Is that a thing? No, <laughs> Jupies. Trigger fish. Jalopies. <laughs> jalopies. We're called uh, goddamn jalopies. Yeah, we're okay. no, so well my mom so you know how it works with being Jewish. My mom's Jewish, therefore I'm Jewish, but my right. dad isn't Jewish. He's just so I'm half. A but, drug but but by rule, if your mom's Jewish, you're Jewish. Right, right. Right. Anyway, so my dad, he's just like a white southern man who's a hippie. Wow. So we um I, d- I never really knew my dad that well. He left, he flew the coop when I was like three years old. So as a kid, I'd only see my dad once a year in the summertime for a week or two when he'd live in Hawaii or New Mexico or wherever hippie place he'd live. And I would just see my dad occasionally. So I never, I never really got to know him that well. So you but would now, go stay with him? I would go stay like for, you know, once a year for okay. summer vacation. My mom would send me off for two weeks or however long just to get the fuck away from me. Don't blame <laughs> her. And I'd go see my dad and he always lived in some cool place because he's a hippie and he'd be like on the beaches of Hawaii or New Mexico. Or what wherever. did he do for a living? He, he's a a breathwork coach which he teaches <laughs> yeah where you you get high like Lamaze your, classes yeah kind of but without being pregnant he te- he teaches breathwork and you you get high like it's crazy if you were to like do holotropic breathwork where you just breathe out of your mouth for like an hour like <sighs> if you do that for an hour laying down you'll have like psychedelic experience anyway he does workshops <laughs> with Damn. with breathwork so yeah. he's a real fucking hippie yeah. you know and uh so you go visit him. Yeah, I, he lives in Asheville, North Carolina now, which mm-hmm. is a very hippie part of the South. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I forget how it came up, but he he had a uh, he had a stroke recently, and he was so he's been like healing from a stroke, and he's oh. been doing a lot of people do psychedelic therapy for like oh. you know it's like a thing now to do mushrooms or I've LSD about this. to sort of accept yeah. these things later in life, or if you have cancer, people do mushrooms to help them cope with it. So I think he's always done psychedelics, but I think as part of his healing, he was asking if I could get any acid. He asked me, and I've never talked to my dad about acid before, and I hadn't done acid in 20 years since I was like really young. But recently, like a couple years ago, I did some again for the first time in 20 years, and I loved it. I was like, oh shit, this is amazing. Really? Yeah, I fucking had a great day on it, and I was in Hawaii, and I did some with my buddy, and I was just like, oh my God, I forgot how great this was. So I bought a little bit of some to have have around the house. So I go, funny enough, Dad, I haven't done it in 20 years. Can you pass me the salt, the pepper? No, that's the acid. Put that back. (laughs) Yeah, that's liquid LSD. Be careful. So basically, I was like, yeah, funny you're asking. I do have some. So I sent him some in the mail on... uh, I dropped some on mints, like um, like uh, Altoids. So you just drop one on an Altoid, so each Altoid would be one hit of LSD. And he's like, me and my wife want to do some. So I sent him like five hits in dental floss package in the mail. And uh, I Good guess he loved- Good USPS. Yeah, yeah. And he loved it. And he was like, Simon, that stuff was so good. Thank you. And then, so I happened to be working on the East Coast. Me and Mickey were on tour in North Carolina, and I had a day off, so I went to visit my dad. And he goes, hey, I have some of that acid you sent me. You want to do some? And my first thought was, fuck no. I don't want to be on acid with my dad. Like, I was in your balls at one point. Like, yeah, what the out. fuck? And then I was like, you know what? Uh, yeah, let's fucking do it. So we both did some. And we spent the day together and, like, walked around this park. And took. he's a photographer, too. And we took some photographs. And he was telling me all this crazy shit that uh, I never knew about my side of the family on his side because I never really knew that side of the family. So he's telling me all this crazy shit while we're on acid. Like, you know, my dad, your grandfather was basically a cult leader. I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, he opened up a spiritual center in in, uh, Colorado and slept with all the women Uh and like abused his power. And I'm like on acid going, whoa, seems like a movie or something. And he's telling me all this crazy shit because I never knew that. I never even met my grandfather on that side. And we're just tripping out and he's telling me all this stuff that would have been weird enough sober yeah much less on acid yeah and we're just walking around Asheville and you know having a good old time and and uh laughing and and it was fucking intense like but in a weird way it was like therapeutic because people actually do that I know if, I've heard of people doing family therapy on MDMA, like ecstasy. Whoa. They do therapy to- They all start fucking each other. Yeah, just- to, I can't hate you, Dad. <laughs> I want to fuck you now. They just rave music. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it makes sense. It's weird. I know you probably aren't into psychedelics. No, because I'm already psychotic, so right. I can't imagine taking it to the next level. <laughs> yeah, no, it's interesting. It's 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 a touchy thing. It's not for everybody. But anyway- we, it, Wait, it, so it, have it you ever was, had a bad trip? 
Yeah, but I think even a bad trip is a good trip, and I know that sounds crazy, but even a bad trip's good for you in the end because, like, if it's bad, some shit came up that needed to be addressed, like that's that some some shit in your shadow, you know, some deep down shit that'll come up. It's like you needed to have that experience. I think it's good. So maybe at the time it's awful, but in the end, I think after it's done, it's like, oh, I learned something from that. What does know? it feel like to be on um, acid? It's well, the stuff that I got is really clean. Like it's just like ninety nine point nine percent liquid, pure. Ele- There's no. It's not very handy. One percent like, cat shit. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it. It's so clean that you uh, you could eat on it. You could sleep on it. It's not like you're just tripping out and everything's like fucking like your nightmare of what acid would be. It's actually better than even mushrooms, which I. So for me, mushrooms are too heady. When I do mushrooms, I get really kind of like weirded out. Yeah. But LSD is more clean and it's just kind of like, you know, this would look a little more furry and this water would be, this is the best water I've ever had. Like tasting? Yeah, everything's just kind of like, like uh, a friend of mine said he did LSD and was drinking wine and he could like taste like the every single little nuanced flavor that was in the wine he never noticed before. But he's like, oh my God, I can taste the wood and the cherry and the, and the you know, the fucking everything because wow. you, your, your senses are so peaked. You know, do you think it opens up more of your brain? Yeah, they say we use only ten percent of our brain. That's exactly what it does. I mean, that's it. You can look at a chart of like uh, the the human brain on LSD, and all these areas start lighting up and connecting that normally wouldn't. So that's exactly what's happening. So you're just becoming almost like more aware of life. Super, and you know, it's something you just do once, and it's not a drug that you would do all the time. Like you know, people always say like drugs are bad. I think there's good drugs and there's bad drugs. Just like there's like people say like that's like saying food is bad. Well, you could go eat organic salad or you could eat McDonald's. One's good, one's bad. I right. think within the drug thing, there's some good drugs that are healthy, good for you once in a while, and then it's not good to do coke and you know eat pharmaceutical pills all day. But right. I think once in a while doing some psychedelics is healthy for your your psyche. Do you I think feel it's good. better after ah, like a thousand cleansed? percent. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a reset. You know when you reset your phone and it operates better? When uh-huh. you do that? It's kinda like what you do to your brain. Really? Yeah, for sure. I'm not recommending anyone do that, but for me, that's my experience. Is that anytime I've done it, the next day I'm like, whoa, like I feel so much more like clear and good. You know, for and a while, and yeah, happy. yeah, for mentally, because I suffer from like mild depression yeah. and anxiety and all these yeah. things, and it actually has been helpful for me because I just do it once in a while. Like it's and not it something you could do all the time. You got to go out into nature and do it like in a controlled environment. You don't want to be like sitting on the 405 <laughs> in traffic. You want to be out in nature with like one or two people you really love and trust and do it right, not just be like at a party doing it. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. Like, yeah. So mushrooms are more, what are mushrooms like? They're a little, well, there's so many different kinds, but to me, I find mushrooms are a little, since it's a poison, like your stomach gets kind of sick and I always get kind of just like, I have more of a, dark experience oh. usually you yeah. know and uh, i'm kind of find myself going okay i want this to end now you know but, with, but it just keeps going it keeps coming <laughs> and, and do you see shit like do you actually see people say like oh man i saw like a purple elephant or like i saw a monster or, like do you actually see any of that i have never seen like a full-on like thing appear but i have done it before where i've looked up in the stars and like been like fully cognizant of the fact that i know i'm not seeing this but i'm looking up at the stars i'm like whoa i'm i know i'm tripping right now but those stars stars are connecting and they're making a face that I'm looking at and really? look at this constellation over here are the stars and it's a dragon I'm like whoa it's like lines between them and I'm like I, I know this is the LSD talking but I'm looking at it so you're aware you're not like you know what I mean um, do you ever think and, like maybe that that stuff is there and your brain is able to see it now but yeah um that's no. interesting point uh that's that's because <laughs> Then you're just opening up that whole conversation of like what's reality and every, what's your perception. And, and, and I think you just see things for what they are a lot more and you kind of get out of your conditioned brain and more into like a, your, your uh, raw sort of experience more. You just get in tune with things. You see things more clearly. But I, I don't know. That's a tough question to answer. I don't know the answer to that. But I think that uh, for me, the, the most I ever had, I remember when I told you I hadn't done it in 20 years. Right. And a couple years ago, I, I did some LSD for the first time in Hawaii. And I remember... I was tripping so crazy. I was sitting on the beach and I was looking at the ocean and like the waves and I was fully aware. I'm looking at the beach and I'm like, okay, I know I took acid and I know that this isn't out there, but the waves were creating these like paisley uh, patterns off of like as a wave would crash, like a purple swirl would come off of it. And I'm like, whoa, 
do you guys see that? Like, no. <laughs> They're all, uh, we just had a kombucha. <laughs> yeah, We're not really yeah, like yeah. on what you're on. Dude, yeah. dude. And I was and just you... tripping. I'm just looking at the beach and I'm just in nature, you know, ocean, sand, you know, a couple of close friends. They were on LSD as well, but they weren't seeing what I was seeing. I think I took more. And I was just <laughs> seeing these paisley swirls. And then I was looking at a wood fence. I remember going up to this wood fence. And you know, like the grains in wood yeah. were fully fully just like moving and dancing and i just kept saying oh my god you, that fence is dancing and i remember some guy was walking by who's a surfer who wasn't on acid he's like what the fuck are you talking about i'm looking at a fence going it's dancing it was just like he's like all right bro but i swear i was looking at the wood grains and they were just moving and i was just i was like i could just stare at this fence all day wow yeah. so it makes you enjoy like the little things yeah like a wood fence don't you wish you could take a picture with your brain yes. of what you were seeing i wish i could show it to you and here's another thing i wish i wish you could do it for like 20 minutes because it's like a 10 hour day it's Ooh. a long commitment it's like you know what if you just did a little tiny teeny teeny bit you could do that but you're not going to be seeing the dancing fence that's oh. the thing you could do like micro dose and have like it's actually a lot of people are micro dosing now for therapeutic reasons like you can just do like a very small amount and not get high and it actually like opens up the parts of your brain without you f hallucinating and tripping out and not so actually tripping at all like for someone like you and i'm not saying to do this or anyone watching but microdosing is super good for people with any type of mental like uh you know uh, depression or you know anxiety things like that because uh just the studies have shown that shit works <laughs> if you microdose it and you don't get high just do a tiny bit <laughs> You know, you, you'll you have the healthy benefits of it without tripping out wow. and seeing the, the dancing fence. Then you see me next time and I'm all, yeah. oh, that's yeah. right. Just, well, I'm it's all not drooling for, out. Yeah, it's not for everybody. You know, no, I like, mean, I would love a break from my brain. That right? would be fabulous. That's what I'm saying. You're, me and you are very fucking chihuahua monkey brains. I literally don't even get a break from my brain when I'm sleeping. It's fucked up. Do you ever wake up in the middle of the night and it's just like, Brrr, and you're just like, dude, just, can I have a second? I did that this morning. I woke up at 4.30 and I couldn't go back to bed just because, mm -hmm. like, life. Yeah. Just wake up and I'm just like, oh, my God, what are you doing with your life? You're still in L.A., you fucking loser. You got to get <laughs> out of here. What the fuck's going on? Your dog passed away a couple years ago. You're going to get another dog? Aww. You got to pay the bills. You knew Dwayne. Uh, Dwayne. Yeah, he was cute. Are you going to get another one? I want to get, I'm waiting. I'm doing a dog break because okay. it's the biggest responsibility yes. in the world. And I. Other than a baby. Well, and, uh. We're speaking of babies. Are you gonna have one? I want to have one one day. No babies for you. I think I don't know if I want one. It's a big I can't talk about handle responsive. it. I know. Are we I'm selfish? too. Uh, no, I'm not. So, well, maybe I am because you know what? I'm tired all the time, and I just don't think I'd have the energy for it. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And my my one girlfriend who's very similar to me had one, and she's so happy and everything like that. But she's like, I'm fucking tired, yeah. dude. Like I haven't slept in 14 days. <sighs> like you know what I mean? Yeah. Like she's fucking really bent and like tired. And I can't function when I'm tired. You I know, know what I mean? And I'm fucking. I sleep for like 12 hours a night. But Do you like, really? Yeah, 12 hours. You're missing half your. You're missing a lot of your life. Yes, but here's the thing: when I'm sleeping, I have like really stressful dreams. Really? So yeah. So I'm not actually getting rest. So that's why oh. I'm always tired because like my no, brain. You, why do you always have stressful dreams? What's every that about? Night. Tell me what's. Can you tell me about one yeah, of them? Yeah, I mean it's just my brain. Like like literally last night I had a dream, and I remember all my dreams. Like, like that's how vivid they are. They're so vivid and they're so real. Like last night my dream was that I was in the fucking Kardashians' house. Mm. I don't know why, and it was like Chloe and Courtney and and Kim and their mom, and they were like I was helping them with their kids, and I was like I don't know why I was there, and then like. Kim got mad because she was like, Tommy talked shit on me in this like one picture a while ago. And I was like, I'm sorry. He was probably just kidding around. Like it was like so awkward. And I just have these stressful dreams and they're right. always stressful and they make no sense. Right. Like, and so every night I'm fucking inundated with like these insane dreams and I wake up sometimes and I'm like, fuck, like I'm so exhausted. I wake up exhausted yeah, because that's interesting. it's like I don't get the shutdown that everybody you gets. You know, I'm going to get you on the phone with the girl that I told you I'm seeing because she does dream analysis. Whoa. Like she understands like what that would mean and can yeah. tell you like, because there's the theory that some dreams like are totally random. Like you could have a dream about the Kardashians because at night before you went to bed, you saw them on TV. So it like downloads right. in there. But then there could also be some bigger meaning in your subconscious that right. you don't realize what too it means. Yeah, whatever it is. <laughs> Hi, you know. Brittany. Yeah. It's your Botox yeah. entering your dream. It could um, be it could be a lot that you don't that you that's right there, but you don't realize it that that someone could make that that does dream analysis would make sense out of you like oh my god that's so true I didn't even think about that yeah. so it's, it's interesting I, I love analyzing my dreams I had a lucid dream last night where you were able to control everything. yeah that's the best it's so rare yeah. I had one last night you just reminded me as we were 
talking about dreams and I was and I've had this a few times where I'm like doing some supernatural thing where like I'm jumping a hundred feet in the air and perfectly landing and doing backflips and I'm going whoa I'm dreaming so I'm gonna do a triple backflip and land perfectly and I'm just and then you wake up and you want to continue yeah. the dream but only nightmares continue you ever notice that you wake up out of a dream when you're about to get a double blow job from the <laughs> Kardashians and you're about to get it and then you try to go back to bed and you can't it won't continue, but if you're about to get murdered by the yeah, Kardashians, then you right go back, back to bed. Ah, right? We're back. We're back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, dreams are a trip, man. There's so much. It's so interesting, and, and they still Lucid don't dreaming know. is awesome. It's, I've only done it a few times, and I haven't last night. I try to. T- I try when I'm in my dream. I'm very aware, and I tell myself, "You're dreaming. Yeah, yeah. Like, take control." And I try to, and it just my brain doesn't let me for some reason. My brain is like fighting against me and th- throws shit at me right. that I don't want. Right. And I'm like, "Fuck!" And then the worst part is, is when I'm lucid dreaming, and I'm like, "In I'm sitting in my dream, and it feels like I'm stuck in my dream, and I'm me, and I'm just Whoa, sitting there, and I'm like, dream. Inception, fuck." Like, I'm just sitting in my dream and I'm like, well, I'm going to be asleep for a couple more hours. You so. really, but you don't really sleep 12 hours a night. Like, really, tell me honestly what time you go to bed and to wake bed up. I went to bed at uh, 10 o'clock last night right. and I woke up at literally 12 p.m. today. That's even but over. But is that normal? That's all the time? Every day. Because I'm more of a six. I need I'm like a so six, much rest. That's, I'm a, that's Tommy, too. That's normal. I think, okay, so Six there's hours. the whole, yeah, well, th- you know, there's this, all the science and data are coming out now because forever it was, you need eight hours sleep, but I think that's bullshit because I think six, I'm fine on yeah, six. Yeah. And it also depends on like how deep of REM you get right, pretty much. It's like right. if you're just waking up and tossing and turning all night and sleeping for 12 hours, you're not really getting a deep rest. But uh, I'm a, I'm about a six guy, but that's... that leaves me with six more hours of life than you I per know, day. I know. Which I guess could be a good or a bad thing. No, it's a bummer. Like, I actually talked to my doctor and I was like, is there a pill that I can take that will keep me from having dreams? Because every night I dream without fail. There's like no night that I've ever had where I haven't dreamt. And so he was like, there's this drug called Prozosin, which is a dream that they give to a lot of people that are like PTSD victims. And it keeps you from having nightmares. But he's like, it doesn't technically keep you from having dreams but it will keep you from having nightmares but he's like but i just want you to like try meditating and fucking counting your fucking vagina hairs and doing right. whatever else they try to get you to do before they get seven a- by the way vagina it's hairs. seven hairs um, it is because i've had it lasered so it's just little sprigs but you know what i'm saying like yeah. it's just kind of like so there is something i can take but it's like then again i'm also sitting there like i don't want to put a drug in right, my body right. i just weaned myself all the way down on my antidepressant to like right. one tiny little pill right. yeah you like, don't want to be mixing and shit i don't want to be yeah. on pills i had a guy on my podcast who was in prison for like 10 years so he had some serious like trauma like right. PTSD from being in solitary confinement for years and he said he never remembers his dreams from being in prison something happened in prison that made him like not remember his dreams which he was bummed kind of bummed about because like that would be one of the only things you have in prison I imagine would be like your escape would be dreams at night is right. how you, you're free so he he never remember I'm sure he has them he just can't remember them um, it's weird how you can't you I only can't remember them and him. someone else will never. That's so weird. I would love to go to sleep and wake up and be like, I didn't dream, I didn't anything, I just fucking slept. It'd be so weird. nice. But instead I literally go to sleep, I'm tired as shit, I lay down, my head hits the pillow, I fall asleep right away because my body's just so exhausted from my brain running right. 24-7. And then it's like my brain starts to wind down and then we enter like the new world, the dream world. Yeah. And it's like, good morning, we're awake in the dream world and Whoa. here we go about the dream day. And right. I'm like, I just don't get rest. Wow, that's interesting. So because of that mental nonstop, you, you, the, it's the mental fatigue because physically you're getting a lot of rest. So like much. so that's but what mental rest, yeah, none. Yeah, my brain Whoa. is like, I am so exhausted. How, I wonder what that's about. Is that genetic? Is that conditioned? I wonder if, were you born that way or was that like something? Because me and like s- some of us that do this for a living, we're fucking crazy. Yeah, like, we're yeah, crazy to a certain yeah. degree uh, to do what we do and be like, hey, everyone, look at me. Like, we're yeah, fucking nuts. Yeah. Uh, I wonder because, I mean, I have a lot of like, I've talked about this a thousand times. My family has a lot of anxiety, depression, all that shit. Yep, yep. But no one else in my family has it to like, well, I shouldn't say no one, but like people in my family, like where I'm constantly like having panic attacks and fucking riddled with crazy dreams. And like, they all seem to be functioning. Whereas like, I am like, sh- every day is like a hard, it's hard. They're back like, in Philly, right? Yeah. And you're in LA. I yeah. wonder if you like lived on a tropical island and were had a chill life, if it would, your brain would be calm down. Cause we live in the fucking craziest place. But I live too. in Calabasas though. But it's still, like you've so got to drive through, mellow. F- you're in Burbank right now. It's, we're still in LA. You know? Yeah, yeah. LA. But the thing I like about it is like, oh, there's like hospitals everywhere and that kind of thing. Cause I'm paranoid. Right. Scared of dying. Right. 
all the time. Yeah. <laughs> You're not, are you? No, I, well, I, I, it's interesting. I go back and forth. Sometimes I'm like, that freaks me out more than anything. And then other times I'm like, oh, dude, it's just all part of the fucking deal. Like, there's nothing you could do. I always wonder, like, if someone could tell you, like, when you're going to die, would you want to know? I'm like, fuck no. I don't want to no, know. No, because then you'd live every minute of your life waiting. Or you'd live your life better. You because think? if you knew that you were going to die in 16 months, you'd be like, fuck it. I'm going to skydive on acid naked <laughs> over a fucking volcano. Because I'm volcano. not going to die any other way. I'm going to die at this you know? point in six months. That's true. So, and then the, and you go to the East. Like I was just in Asia for six weeks because I'm better than you. And in Asia, their <laughs> philosophy on death, it was interesting. I was uh, going through this village in Bali in a taxi cab and there was like a celebration. And I was like, oh, what is it? Like, you know, a new year out here? What's the celebration? Everyone's in the streets. He goes, he's like the cab driver's like, no, someone died. That's a funeral. I'm like, why are they all happy? He goes, oh, and here we, we celebrate death. It's okay. It's all part of the journey. And then I was thinking in America at a funeral, it's like pounding on the casket. Yeah. Why'd why? you have to take my baby? Yeah. And there Everyone's they're like, in black. they're happy. And, and it was so crazy. I just got the chills. As he was explaining that to us, there was a, like a picnic in the park and there was something burning in the middle of the park and it was the body. And they all party around the burning body. And this is the Balinese tradition or it might be Hindu. I'm not sure. But they were burning the fucking body and having like a party around it. And it was just all good. Like they're on to the, the, that was it. And it just made me trip out how we're so different in the West and how we look at death and how we treat it when it happens. And they were celebrating and burning the body in front of kids and everything. The kids are all, yay, can I get the leg? Marshmallow. <laughs> I know, right? Fuck. Marshmallows and fucking just it was a having. Trip. That's that crazy. Trip. Yeah. That's you, why I like traveling because that's the kind of shit you'll see. You're like, whoa, that's fucking heavy. I'm driving through the fucking smoke looking ooh, at that happen and learning. Whoa. Yeah, that tricky. freaks you out. I, w I was reading because um, sometimes when I'm because I'm obviously death obsessed, I'll read about stuff. And the, I was I was reading about like what happens to your body when you die in the hospital. And they were like, well, they usually, you know, ha you know, show it to your family, whatever. And then they cover you, they wash your hair, wash your body and prepare you to go to the morgue, right? And the nurses have to do that or the person that's gonna be bringing you to the morgue. And some of these nurses were like telling crazy stories about mm. how people were pronounced dead. And then they just sit up. Well, uh, uh -huh. And they, and several yeah, I've people heard, I've heard of that. I've heard happen. Of that. Like I was reading about it, and it was like this other this guy kicked me, almost kicked me in the face, and like that, that's not rigor mortis. It's like no, the, it's, it's like, like your, the brain your, has like your a, brain still has a, is firing whoa. electrical, uh, you know, because it's not shut down all the way, right. and still firing, and so somebody will move their whoa, hand or they'll open their eyes. Oh, that's that's or the, that's got to be the sit worst. Up one. And they then, just pop a boner and come everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, whoa, we thought you're dead, Rick. <laughs> Not yet, Stacy. <laughs> Not with those fucking knockers in my face. Um, but how scary is that? That's Can you the worst imagine? Thing of, that might be the worst thing. That can, imagine poor, you're on acid on that yeah. one. She goes, they did acid that. Ah! Uh, fucking John Paul just sat up and he fucking Jesus. been pronounced dead. Like, yeah, that's it's, so. That's like my fear is that like when you die, that your brain and like your body functions are shut down, but you're still aware. And so it kind of scares Whoa. me. You ever have uh, sleep paralysis? No, that's have a weird, you had I've that? Had, that's the scariest thing in the world. Like, what is that like? I've had it a couple Thank of times. Thank God I've never. Oh, Ugh. That's where you're laying there and like you try to wake up and you're like, okay, I'm up. And you, your brain, you, you're going, you, you, you're like, I'm going to sit up now and open my eyes and mouth and you can't move. It's like you're in peanut butter. It's like you're stuck in a jar of peanut butter and you can't move yet. Your brain is telling you to get up and it lasts a few seconds and finally you're like, Oh, fuck I couldn't move and it's a few seconds and it's like the scariest feeling how like many that, that, times have you had that probably 10 in my life that's a lot I know it's just like random and I found out it's like not that abnormal it's not like I have some random no. con condition <laughs> uh, but it's fucking it was definitely a scary feeling uh, it happened once at a party in not a party I was shooting a movie in Arizona and I had all these people in my hotel room and I passed out on the couch and I, and I was just hanging out like this and I just could and, and like I passed out and like I, I woke up and I hear people hanging out and having a beer <laughs> and you're all and, I want a beer uh, no no I, I swear I tried to like get up and be like hey guys and like get up and move and for like 15 seconds I was stuck catatonic and I could just hear them <laughs> like, all, why Simon look like that yeah, no I was like passed out but I couldn't get up and I heard them and, and then finally I just came out of it and I was like fuck you guys didn't see me They're like yeah you're passed out I was like no I was awake and I was like fully You're awake. You're like, you guys didn't help me. Fuck you. Yeah. Get out of my hotel room. It was so that was, that Ew, was the scary one because I was in a public environment. But normal, the other times it's just been in bed. I never want that to happen. It was scary. It's I heard that's one. like when a demon like comes Ooh, in. Like <laughs> I got a lot of demons. It's that demons. would be the worst if that lasted for eternity. You're just stuck. Like that's how I. F that's what I worry about.
So for me, do you do anything to get out of your head? Because I try meditation and yoga and all these things. But for me, the, the what I found that works more than like yoga and meditation to get out of my head is if I go do something like if I play basketball, then I have an objective and I'm playing a game or something. Or if I'm doing something that gets me out of my thinking brain is more of an escape than like sitting there thinking or going to yoga like I'm still thinking and shit, so it's hard for me to get out of the monkey brain. The, uh-huh. the prefrontal cortex doesn't stop dancing around. Yeah. But if I go like play basketball after an hour later, I'm like, whoa, I wasn't thinking about nothing for the last hour except basketball. ball in basket, catch the ball, high f- Like, It's like I have an objective, so that's more meditative than meditating in a weird way. So you're way. saying I need to become a basketball star? Or some sport. Or some sport. <laughs> or, or, or like snowboarding. Or like I it's, suck you know what it is? And sports. it's flow state. It's like yeah. the flow state when you're in the zone and you're doing something you're not thinking. That's the shit when you can get out of your head. Because for you and me, it's so hard to get out of our like analytical brain, you know? Yeah, that's it's crazy. Tricky. I need to get good at something because I suck at all that yeah, shit. Yeah, me too. It's I'm tough. horrible at it. I know. I'm, it's fucked. We're already in an hour. Okay, okay we could stop. How about that? We could stop. An I know, hour. I'm, Did I know it I'm a lot. Feel Thank like you. It? I'm no, sorry. you're a fantastic. No, guest. but I don't. I need to sleep. Like, I just left yoga. I almost got in a fight at yoga. I can't <laughs> slow down. I had coffee right before I came. I semi hard right now. My I got shoes on the floor. Hippie shoes. I'm having an identity crisis. You know what? Have you ever tried not drinking coffee? It's yeah. I just did. I just did. Uh, I always quit everything. I just did a month sober, and I'll like, but like, not even a drink of alcohol. Yeah. And uh, and I'll do coffee too. And it's pretty easy after the first few days. But I like coffee. I like going to get it. Eh. I like. Are you drink coffee? No. Oh, what? I'm fucking psycho. Can you imagine if I drank coffee? How much more psycho I'd be? Fuck, I know I should do it. You know what? It might be time for another coffee detox, but I I love it. Like this morning I was up at 4.30 and I'm like making my coffee. And I'm like, then I get all excited and then I start making music. I like my little music studio and it gets my brain kind of going. You've been up since 4.30 in well, the morning? Well, I'm still jet lagged from Asia. Like my oh, bo- I got back up. a few days ago, so I'm all fucked up. Like yeah. I wake up in the middle of the night wide awake and I fall asleep at like 5 p.m. on the You're couch. Oh, and- triggerfish! Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Sleep paralysis trigger fish sucking my dick. Anyway. Well, you've been an amazing guest. Thank I want you. everyone to go check out your podcast, Nervous, Nervous Rex. Yeah, you can hear and go, crazy go shit. listen to uh, Simon talk to himself on his podcast yeah. and not interview his guests. It's and we great. have an episode that's up there. We talk. <laughs> we do. I never. You know what's crazy? I never. Rem- people are like, what did you guys talk about? No idea. No idea. I just completely forget afterwards, and I, like it's. No, just, I always it, remember it's fun, and then like when they tell me like, oh, this person's podcast is coming out, I'm like, oh yeah, check yeah. out this crazy episode, yeah, and I'm yeah. like, I don't remember what we said, but then I'll listen to it and remember. It. Yeah. Do you um, listen to your own pod sometimes to learn? Yeah. A lot. Do you? Can you get through the whole thing? Is yes. it hard? Okay. Well, only when I talk less. But I've noticed talking less is better. Well, when you have me on, you don't get a word in. So that, I loved it. Yeah. I was just, I my when brain, I a, to talk about flow state, I just sat here and stared at you for an hour. <laughs> yeah, I love when I have a guest that doesn't shut up. I'm just like, oh, this is easy. I'm just like, so where were you, where are you born? And an hour later, it's just like they talked about themselves for an hour. <laughs> How great is yeah, that? It's great. And some and like I just had Michael Rosenbaum on, and he's such a funny, smart dude. And he just was like, I didn't have to do anything. I'm like, oh, this is the dream guest. He like can ham it up, and he's funny yes. and charming, and he knows what he's talking about. He's, I'm just like, I wish every guest was this easy. Some Sometimes you gotta like pull it out of somebody, oh. but when you get a real entertainer on there, you're just like that's let the best. Him go. I, I love this. This was flow state for me all yeah, the way. Baby. I was like, I just need to have Simon on my podcast more, where I can just sit here and go, uh huh, mm-hmm. uh huh. You're lucky I didn't uh-huh. fart into the mic. Oh my god, I was waiting for that. Dude, I, you know that would be it would make the ratings go up a bit. I would love it actually if you can I get wish one you could out. Brew one up. No, but it would change nothing. No nothing. leftover faux no. farts from Asia. No. Nothing. We have nothing. Nothing. I don't want to. All right. Well, I want people to follow you. They already know where to find you on your podcast, Nervous Rex, available on all platforms. Check out Simon Rex. Are you still on Instagram? Your Instagram? Yeah, I'm on Instagram. Simon Rex 415. Why is that? Because that's my Bay Area area code I grew up in because someone had Simon Rex and Simon Rex, like one, two, like a few, my name was taken. So I just went with my area code. I want. My own name without the number, but right. some fucker won't give it to me. I keep you asking, like, give me 10 it? grand. I'm like, fuck you. Give me 10 grand. Yeah, yeah, really? for 10 grand. What fuck you, psycho. Simon Rex. Yeah, Simon Rex, you anyway. piece of shit. Simon He's Rex probably not even named Simon Rex. No, it's a fake name. Anyway, anyway, follow Simon Rex 415 yeah. on Instagram and make sure to check out the podcast Nervous Rex. And what about y'all tour dates? Oh, yeah. I got a. Wait, when does this come out? This is probably coming out in like three weeks. Oh, three weeks. So then I just did it. If it's in three weeks, I just did a show in Portland with uh, by myself. And I, and I just did a show with Mickey in Michigan. And after that, I don't know after three weeks. I have nothing okay. planned. So right. right now, there's nothing. But where can they go to look to see if something comes up? Oh, yeah. Just on my Instagram or go to uh, dirtnastymusic.com. Has all my dates and music shit up there. Dirt Nasty music.com yeah, by yeah. the way one of my favorite songs is um your song that's like the in the club 
Oh, uh, or what is somebody it? Somebody. Oh no, uh, it was no, the no. LMFAO song no, or the farted in the club. No, it's um. 1980. Hey girl, what you mm-hmm. wanna do? Come on down to the cocaine room. Dun, dun, uh, oh yeah, dun, 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 dun. in the motel room. Motel oh, room. Yeah. yeah. What's the I forgot that about song? that song. It's called In the Motel Room. That's what it's by called. By Dirt Nasty. Yeah, by Dirt Guys, Nasty. Guys, this is what, song is such a fucking banger. Damn, I still I for, play it. It's on you. my like, list. I gotta start list. doing that one live again. Motel Room. Yeah, Motel Room. That's what it's called. Dirt Nasty. Yeah. Go download that song or at least just... <laughs> I wanted to end with this bit thing, dude. <laughs> I keep thinking something's wrong. No, no, everything's fine. I mean, everything's wrong. I mean, is everything fine? Not really. Let's be real. Yeah. Um, go download the song "Motel Room" with Dirt Nasty. It's Thank fucking you. hilarious. I've been so I'm so happy to have you here. And, I love you. Um, follow Simon Rex on Instagram, and we will see y'all. Anything else you want to say? No, but I wanted if we just if I talk for seven, seven six, it'll be exactly an hour. <laughs> Four, three. three. Two, two. I love you. You're the best. One. Happy, Happy New Year. Year. <laughs> we did. Happy we did New it. Year, everybody. And it. make sure to stay tuned next week for more Worst First. <laughs> my, my outro music. <laughs> Girl, what you want to do? Come mm, down mm, to, to the, the motel, motel room. room. I don't even remember it's that one. cool. It, we ain't going to fight. Throw <laughs> your pennies to the side. Oh, yeah. Da, da, fuck. Do you like it? Girl? This song. Oh Wait, it's hang on. Bad. I need to fucking play it. So it's crazy. such a fucking banger, dude. That's how do so you fun. not? I just, I don't remember anything. How do you Dirt, not nasty, perform motel. that song? I'm going to start doing it again. You just made me. Here it is. My favorite fucking song. I'm going to play some of it for everybody. Ready? There it is. Uh. <laughs> and I busted out the magnum. She got dick and bit my neck. Don't leave a mark because my girlfriend tripped. You a taxi cab in the month where they are. Taxi days. In the motel room. Sleep paralysis. In the motel room. Panic attacks. In the motel room. Sleeping 12 hours. In the motel room. I'm gonna hang myself in the motel room. Wake up where you gotta go. Looking at the dough. Yeah. Such a good yeah, song. Yeah, thank you. How do you not perform that? I don't even that? remember that. I okay, we're still anything. talking. Anyway, yeah. it's over. Bye, guys. Bye.